So with everybody pretty much talking about, in my opinion, uh, the moment in 150, thanks to Cyberpunk Jordan's recent video, you know, you, you really have to wonder if, you know, Ken Penders knew he was leaving the book, that he might as well go all out. What I mean is, pretty much when, and this is something that I learned by watching um, an interview between Stan Lee and Kevin Smith back in 2002, uh, when they released the Stan Lee uh, Marvels and Monsters uh, DVD, which I think you can find that interview here on YouTube. And um, Stan basically said that, you know, Amazing Fantasy was coming to an end, and which was an anthology book at the time. And that, you know, since it was the last issue, they could pretty much write you know, whatever they wanted to write, you know, kind of get it, you know, out of the system, as I check the mic there, see if it's on, uh, but basically write whatever they want to get out of the system. And, of course, the end result was Our Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, which is still going on to this day. But, you know, the same could be said for writers. If they know their time on a book is coming to an end, um, are they basically willing to... Uh, take the opportunity to write whatever they want to write or put in whatever they want to put in even very subtly and I think they are I think they do take advantage of that opportunity and when I look at what Ken Penders did here he basically well as he he's gone on record and everybody else has gone on record about it he fixed a lot of what he thought Carl Bowlers um, had basically screwed up you know, when Carl was the head writer sharing duties with Ken, you know, in writing the book, and I think Ken was off doing the Knuckles book, Carl decided to take things in a direction that obviously some of it Ken was cool with and some of it he wasn't. You know, like with, you know, Antron turning bad because, you know, he got scarred up and his attitude changed in the year they thought Sonic was dead, and Ken didn't like that. He didn't like the idea that you know, Carl had done this and it caused Instoy Bunny to break up with Antoine, but, you know, not be an item anymore. Uh, Ken didn't like this, so what did he do? You know, Ken decided, I'm going to fix this, I'm going to retcon this, and instead of it being the actual Antoine that went through this, Ken made sure to retcon it before he left that it was actually evil Antoine. It was a patch from Moebus, who got sent there by evil Sonic because patch wanted to basically get rid of him finally usurp him get him out of his hair and the anti-freedom fighters hair once and for all but it backfired so you know ken corrected that and a lot of people would agree that's probably one of the best decisions he made you know in his final time on the book but you know with a few exceptions here and there like you know that revelation being made in line of succession and, and such there were some things they weren't too thrilled with. And of course, one of them, as noted, was Bunny and Sonic. Or well, Bunny basically being, you know, visualized, you know, waking up from a nap, if you will, with who she thought was Sonic at that time, but it's actually Evil Sonic. Uh, the one, as I've mentioned and others have mentioned, would go on to become known as Scourge. And, you know, a lot of people... As I've mentioned countless times, and you can look it up online, a lot of people have said the same thing. Um, you know, not a lot of people were thrilled with that. Because it gave off the impression that she had basically done the deed, the dirty, if you will, with Scourge. Um, and even Ken Penders kind of, uh, in response to a fan, kind of, you know, kind of leaned in that direction as well. But when I look at that moment, too, and despite how you feel about it, you know, how you feel it might have gone or what really happened, you know, the, cha you know, the change in dialogue and everything through the fonts and the speech bubbles, um, I think when I look at that, and, and I mentioned this in the last video, one, I think it was Ken Pender's way of making up for the fact that one of the ideas that he had drafted up, because uh, from what he, his recollect recollection, if you will, was Archie Comics, at, a t at the time when he was still on the book, they wanted to go in a more mature uh, direction with all the titles, including the licensed titles like Sonic. But then decided to halt on that for a while until the time was right, which obviously was 
I would say five, four day, five, four years later, uh, not five, four years later, but almost a decade later. You know, they kind of halted on that, and still, you know, Ken obviously knowing that his time was up with the book real soon, and he only had a few stories left to go, decided, in my opinion, that well, if he couldn't, you know, put the moment in there that he wanted between Jeffrey and Sally, where it's known to, well, he's basically come out to say, say it you know, plain as day that Jeffrey was going to be the one in story had they got, had Archie as a company as a whole gone the direction that I, that he said they w wanted to go originally, uh, Jeffrey would have been the one to take Sally's virginity. But because, you know, Archie Comics at the time backtracked and didn't do that, whatever he drafted up, he had to shelve. And like I said in the previous video, I think, you know, this moment here with Bunny and Evil Sonic was his own... A unique little way of making up for that like okay if I couldn't do it that way I'm gonna do it this way but I'm gonna do it in a way that's you know subtly hints sub subtly hints um, at something ha at something uh, having to having happened uh, between the two so you have to again you you got to look at that moment and you got to say to yourself, or you could not say to yourself, but you got to ask yourself, you know, did Ken realize that, okay, his time on the book was coming to an end, you know, was this way, was this his way of just getting it out of his system? And I would say, yeah. I say, in my personal opinion, because I wasn't there, I'd say, yeah, he, he wanted to get it out of his system. You know, he wanted to, you know, finally, you know, get that moment that he wanted to do with Jeffrey and Sally out of his system you know in some capacity and obviously when he saw the first draft or whatever it was that Carl had written up or typed up for this um, or at least the idea perspective of it he decided this would be the best option and the rest is history you know but obviously he wanted to get it out of his system he wanted to find a way to do it and he knew if he didn't do it before he left the book, he may not get another chance on an official capacity. So, you know, here you go. Now, I'm not saying that's true or anything, but it does kind of fall in line with what I, you know, you know, with what I and everybody else heard uh, Stan Lee say in that interview with Kevin Smith. That basically, this was probably the end of the line for Ken as a writer, just like, you know, uh, Amazing Fantasy's last issue was the end of the line of that book and you know they were allowed to put whatever they wanted whatever stories they wanted to get out of the systems in that book thinking it's not going to sell and Ken obviously from a writer's perspective knew well if I'm going to go out I might as well you know put in a few of the things I wanted to put in you know in some capacity you know not totally in there but in some way and I think that's what he did here I think that's what he did with Bunny, with this moment between Bunny and Evil Sonic. You know, he decided to get what he wanted to do with Sally and Jeffrey out of his system. But, you know, that's just my opinion. It's just my opinion, but I think that's what he wanted to do. I think, I think honestly, that's what he wanted to do. I think he realized, again, his time was up. He only had a, several more issues and stories to contribute. And he realized, well, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to do some of the things I've been wanting to do, even if I have to do it in a very subtle, uh, clean, you know, family-friendly kind of way, um, as he thought, probably thought at the time. And, you know, this is in this moment here is one of those, I guess, examples of him finally getting something out of his system before he, you know, said sayonara to the book. So, um, that, but again, you know, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts down below? Comment if you like. Love to hear from each and every one of you. Live chat during the premiere where Super Chats and Super Stickers are open and would be appreciated. Also check me out at uh, Venmo at brian warmer 2 and at Cash App at BWS98. And check me out with the... And also help donate to me at the Super Thanks after the video's premiere. But again, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this. Do you think Ken knowing that his time on the book was coming to an end that he decided to take the opportunity to do what a lot of writers do when it comes to the uh, tenure ending, uh, you know, with a, com a comic book company, and you know, as a writer or the book's tenure coming to an end. Do you think? Excuse me. There, do you think he took the opportunity to just put that in there because he wanted to get out of the system? 
you know, because he couldn't do it originally as he originally planned? What are your thoughts? Comment below, live chat during the premiere, and I'm out.